This is Sigma Bloom coming to you with the Week 7 Waiver Wire Quick Hitter. A quarterback check and see if Tua Tungabailoa was dropped. It looks like this is going to continue to be a productive pass offense as long as he or Teddy Bridgewater and a quarterback. Daniel Jones would be the next choice up. He's functioning really well in this Giants offense. Wandale Robinson is going to play a bigger role and maybe they'll get some other healthy wide receivers back. Mac Jones could be a viable fantasy quarterback. This Patriots offense is getting better by the week. And they're putting defenses in bad positions, although maybe the lesson of week six is play everybody against the Browns. Marcus Mariota had an excellent day, rushing touchdown, running the ball well, highly efficient on his passes. It's going to be a low-volume passing game, but you still can see a path to value here for Mariota, who's been a viable fantasy quarterback most of the time, and now he's holding on to the job as the Falcons are winning. Matt Ryan... Culture winning, 58 pass attempts probably won't happen again, especially when Jonathan Taylor's back, but you're seeing some viability in the no huddle offense, and you're seeing Matt Ryan show us he can be a boom bust play, but the boom can be pretty loud, at least against the Jaguars who shut him out earlier this year. Justin Fields, remember, the Bears went to the goal line three times with no points, so it could have been a much bigger day for Fields. He did have his best fantasy day of the season against Washington. Now, this week against New England, don't put him in. Bill Belichick's going to humble him. After that, there might be something there. Taylor Heineke's going to take over in Washington. He had some viable days throwing downfield to the receivers that they have in Washington last year, so uh, he's going to be at the very least a bi-week emergency play and uh in your two quarterback superflex leagues don't drop teddy bridgewater if he's dropped pick him up as we can see with tongue of Ilo's injury history that bridgewater could be back in there and we've seen him put up big numbers in this miami pass offense in two quarterback superflex leagues also sam howell with taylor heineke in there we may see how pretty soon mitchell trubisky may start in week seven may cause a quarterback controversy he continues to play the way he did in the second half in the win over the buccaneers and bait Bailey Zappi could get a start if Mac Jones is ready. Certainly, the Patriots have no reason to rush Mac Jones back with the way Zappi's been playing. At running back, a little bit quiet out there. You have Kenyon Drake and Justice Hill. J.K. Dobbins' knee locked up on him, got tight in the game. Not sure where there's at, where he's at with that. Gus Edwards, we're not sure when he's going to play again. And Kenyon Drake showed some value, but Justice Hill showed some value before he got injured. Probably going to see a Hill Drake backfield for week seven against Cleveland. Brian Robinson is a low ceiling starter, but he is a starter. He will get goal line carries for Washington if he's still out there. These are still relatively low priority pickups, even lower priority. Matt Burrito with Saquon Barkley nursing a re injury of his shoulder. He would become the starter. Gus Edwards, it's about time for the preemptive pickup of him with the news about Dobbins' knee. And Deion Jackson, who could go back to the bench this week if Hines and Taylor are ready, but we know that if they aren't ready, Jackson can do some things for our fantasy team. And if they do go down again this year. Jackson has some value. At wide receiver, the biggest pickup would be Darnell Mooney. If he's out there, they're treating him like a number one receiver. He should have had a touchdown. Things will get better for this offense. And I would guess the Bears are going to try to throw the ball, or at least the Patriots are going to make the Bears throw the ball. So Darnell Mooney's got some value. Chase Claypool's back. Had a big game with Mitchell Trubisky. So maybe Claypool's fuse is lit. Uh, Wandale Robinson was barely in the game. 15 snaps, had three catches, 37 yards, and a touchdown. As his snaps grow, his value should grow in fantasy leagues. Tyler Boyd is back in this Bengals offense that is mo mostly focused on beating cover two defenses. That's Tyler Boyd and his route running and his short hands. Alec Pierce, his short hands caught the game-winning touchdown against the Jaguars. His snaps are continuing to go up and again this offense may skew a little more pass heavy going a little bit lower tyquan thornton the rookie had two touchdowns for the patriots now this is a wide target tree but it is a much more efficient and productive offense than we expected paris campbell again it's not 58 pass attempts maybe there's not a lot there for campbell but still keep him at the end of your bench uh, he's still a full-time player for this offense he's coming on for the rams they're spraying the ball around more a little more short passing al robinson kind of looked like himself in a few plays at least if he was dropped you can pick him back up at least in depth as the rams also lost their left tackle so i don't know if things are gonna get better for this offense then skoronic i don't know if he can play left tackle but he could take an end around for a score and get a lot of short catches and he's staying involved in this pass offense again more bi-week emergency depth guys tight end it's a little rosier as we look at the tight ends this week best pickup if he's out there would be Dawson Knox who had a touchdown played 85% of the snaps he's healthy he's attached to Josh Allen that's all you need to know Mike Kosicki highest snap count highest target total of the year all he did was catch two touchdowns hopefully the Dolphins know now that that's how to use him Hunter Henry basically a full-time player in this offense even with Johnny Smith back Browns forgot about him on play an easy 31-yard touchdown and 
that's about all you need to be a fantasy relevant tight end. And again, this offense is looking pretty good. Going a little further down with Randall Cobb out, Robert Tunyon was the struggle frustration target for Aaron Rodgers. I don't know if that's going to continue, but if this offense continues to struggle and Rodgers doesn't really trust anybody, I'll decide to say Alan Lazard and Aaron Jones, Tunyon's going to get those targets. Daniel Bellinger getting targets, converting all five into catches, one of them a touchdown. Well, as this Giants offense is actually functional, there may be a functional player too as the low bar at tight end means Bellinger. And another rookie, Kate Otten, with Cameron Brait suffering a scary neck injury. It sounds like x-rays were negative. I'm not sure we're going to see him again. Otten was already potentially getting a larger role, and it's a dink and dunk pass offense, so Otten's got some value for us in PPR. You've got to go really deep. Look, maybe Jake Ferguson against Detroit this week. Dalton Schultz was a surprise scratch. Ferguson caught a touchdown. Looked like he could do a pretty good impression of Schultz in the passing game. And Juwan Johnson, Thursday night against the Cardinals. Adam Troutman left with an injury on Sunday, so we could see Jawan Johnson have that receiving tight end role all to himself. You've got football guys, hopefully not all to yourself, but we love having you as part of our crew because you're so classy.